Have you ever seen the, the look of apprehension on a colleague's face or even terror when you mention using a technology tool that they're not familiar with? I remember uh, speaking to a colleague on the MALT programme and I mentioned to her about creating a screencast of her work and her eyes widened and her jaw dropped and I can tell you it wasn't from excitement. <laughs> but interestingly enough, that's in sharp contrast, contrast to her demeanour a couple of weeks later when she arrived at my office to proudly show me the screencasts that she had made for her students in the meantime. So what happened in the interim? Well, if you don't mind, I'll just park that for a minute and just tell you a little bit more about what we do. Embedding technology is a strategic goal in DKIT. And in the last number of years, the MALT programme has emerged, I suppose, as a key driver of that uh, because we've had almost 100 of our own staff, that's, that's over one third of the teaching staff who have undertaken the programme. And what do we do then? Well, we model. As a team, we model. And all our modules are blended. So that gives our colleagues a, a, an opportunity to experience blended learning firsthand. And then in the first module of the programme, our focus isn't really on technology, it's on student-centred learning. And we ask our colleagues to reflect on and critically evaluate their own practice. But we do use technology. We introduce it gradually, but only for the delivery of the programme. And th that's really important to us because then it gives our colleagues a chance to experience it as students themselves. And that gives them an insight into their own students' experiences. And we do model the use of the technologies and we introduce them, as I say. Um, and we hope uh, during that module that some of our colleagues will go on to adopt some of them. And actually many of them do. And they do it well in advance of our second module, which focuses much more on, on using the technology. So when they come to the second module, uh, our colleagues still continue to use it as students, but now we ask them to use technology and to look at it as teachers. And we ask them to critically evaluate the technology tools that we show them uh, and to look for tools that are appropriate for them and their students. And many of our colleagues um, come with diverse experiences of using technology in the classroom. And even though most of them are quite open to it, some of them are actually quite nervous about it. So how do we get over that? Well, what we do is we encourage them by taking small steps. We introduce them to tools that they can easily introduce into their own classrooms and which give them uh, quick, quick benefits. But all the time we ask them to be guided by those principles that they met in the first module, the principles of student-centred learning, constructive alignment, and to bear in mind that the technology that we're showing them is really only a catalyst for the learning. And I suppose what's really important about that module is that it provides a safe space for our colleagues to try things out, to experiment, to take risks, and step into what some might call a, a, a liminal space. So what about the colleague from earlier with the screencasts? How did she move into the liminal space and, and beyond it? Well, in the lab, our practical lab, we introduced the screencasting software. She and her colleagues tried it out. They made <coughs> mistakes and they tried it again. But what we saw that day in the lab was a palpable excitement among our colleagues as they were encountering a tool that they could see tremendous potential for. And this colleague, well, her eyes were wide again. They were, but this time, it was because she had found something that she felt she could use in her practice. Something that would be of real benefit to her students, where she could explain exercises to them and they could do the same with her. It was what you might call a threshold moment for her. Does, does the MALT programme have the same impact on all our colleagues? Not surprisingly, it doesn't really. I, I was reading recently that um, we can't create a version or recreate someone else's happiness. We have to create our own version. And it's the exact same for our colleagues with technology. They have to find tools that are appropriate for them and even more importantly, their students. And some of our co colleagues, they 
they are happy for the moment with minor changes. Others implement technology tools to a much larger extent. Some even going on to, to use them in, for their final research papers in the programme. Others even taking it on to doctoral studies. And what about the Institute as a whole? Well, change like this takes time really. Uh, but our recent survey suggests that there is a momentum building and that's due in no small part to the evangelism of the staff members who have been through the MALT program. And as any of them will testify, once you make that transition or cross that threshold, it's a bit like the butterfly emerging from the cocoon. There's no going back. Thank you.